Welcome to all of you. Thanks for being here, those of you here and those on the live stream. Um, the, uh, your hymns, the hymns in the worship aid are in your hymnal in the pews. And let's stand and turn to the back of the church and welcome Mary and the family. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Jim, welcome to the house of God. In the waters of baptism, Jim died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Please join in our opening hymn, number 754, which can be found in the Gray Gather hymnal, Be Not Afraid, number 754. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die. Eternal God, you made the union of man and woman a sign of the bond between Christ and the church. Grant peace and mercy to Jim, who was united in love with Mary. May the care and devotion of his life on earth find a lasting reward in heaven. Look kindly on Mary and their family as they now turn to your compassion and love. Strengthen their faith and lighten their loss. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant 
and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to wear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, 
which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Jim Newhauser loved to tell stories over and over. <laughs> they started with stories about his youth working on his uncle Andy Hughes' farm, driving a tractor at 12 years old. But this was just practice. Mary says the volume went up as the grandkids came along, and he began to relate their running and their rowing exploits. By the 15th or 16th time, you didn't remember the original, Mary says. The stories just got better in his mind. Jim was a good dad, involved and supportive of Brad and Laura, following their activities when they were at home, visiting them when they were at college or after they were married. Admittedly, the visits became more frequent as Elizabeth and Joshua and Sarah and Emma and Adam came along. Jim carried the same concern he had for his family into his work as a pharmacist. He started working the soda fountain at Malotte's Pharmacy, the end of Monroe Street, during his sophomore year at Edgewood High School. Adolph Malotte took him under his wings, called him his third son, and Jim eventually moved from the fountain to the pharmacy end of the business. He entered the University of Wisconsin and began working toward a pharmacy degree. Three years into that, he felt the tug to look into the priesthood and he enrolled at Loras College Seminary. Halfway through the second semester, he decided he'd be too lonely as a priest, and he hitchhiked back to Madison to resume his UW education. Six months after that, his brother Jerry introduced him to young Mary Miller, and as Mary says, he was ready. They were married the summer after he graduated, he continued working at Malotte's until he opened his own store, Newhauser Pharmacy, Family Pharmacy, in 1980. He was proud of being a community pharmacist, took good care of his clients. He knew them and their families, even their pets. He'd make deliveries, do whatever was necessary to serve them. Jim was passionate about golf. 
He and Mary spent a lot of time together on the golf course, but the passion was most evident in the get up before dark, drive to spring green trips to play 18 holes and get back to town in time for work. Jim had three holes in one, but he never saw any of them. <laughs> Mary has two, Mary too has three, but they both saw all of them. Jim was also an avid reader, mostly detective stories, but any good fiction. Laura knew her dad's cancer was really bad when he wasn't reading anymore. Mary says her husband of 55 years was a good guy. He liked everybody. When she had to watch him spend his final days in and out of consciousness, agitated and struggling, she told the nurses, he's too good a guy to have to go through this. Today we bid our earthly goodbyes to this good guy, this loving and attentive husband, father, grandfather, and friend. We salute his years of dedicated service to the health needs of the community. As we bring him to the altar of the God he served so well in his life, we offer the timeless prayers of the Church for his soul. And we pray for ourselves as we finish our lives without his one-of-a-kind presence. Though we'll be deprived of that physical presence, we realize that he won't be lost to our consciousness. The order of Christian funerals instructs the priest so that the priest may inform the people of God that death is not the end, nor does it break the bonds forged in life. Though separated from the living, the dead are still at one with the community of believers on earth, and that all the faithful will be raised and reunited in the new heavens where death will be no more. We sadly acknowledge the truths in our first reading from the book of Ecclesiastes that there is an appointed time for everything under the heavens, a time to laugh and a time to weep, a time to dance, a time to mourn, a time to seek, a time to lose, a time to be born, and a time to die. And we acknowledge that the words of St. Paul from our second reading from the second letter of Timothy are fitting for Jim Newhauser. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, we embrace the comfort that Jesus offers us in our gospel, the promise of resurrection that girds our faith. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. I am going to prepare a place for you, and I will come back again and take you to myself. Although Thomas becomes confused in our gospel, we're confident that Jim understood that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. Let's stand and offer our petitions. My sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Benedict James received the light of Christ. We lovingly ask that you, O Lord, scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Jim was nourished at the table of the Savior. May you, Lord of all mercy, welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await your kingdom. We ask that you grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for Jim's love, his friendship, his faith, and service in our community. May you, O Lord, continue to provide us with faith-filled companions on our journeys. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and we are assembled here in faith and in confidence to pray for our brother Jim. We ask that you strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the presentation of our offertory gifts. Together we sing number 844, Here I Am, Lord, number 844. pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Jim, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Jim, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. For communion, we come up by the center aisles, go back by the side aisles. If you're not Catholic and you'd like to come forward for a blessing, just fold your arms. If anybody needs a low gluten host, we'll have it over here.
Together we sing number 701, Amazing Grace. Number 701.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Jim may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Amen. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Jim in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We thank you for the blessings you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jim, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. As we go forth, we sing number 630, How Great Thou Art. Number six, three, zero.